Hello and welcome to another Teenage Church. I trust that we're all doing well. Let's start with a word of prayer. Dear God, we just want to give all glory and all honor and all praise due to your name. We thank you and we recognize you as being Lord of Lords and King of Kings, the Great I Am, the Bright and Morning Star, the First and the Last, the Alpha and the Omega. We thank you for every role that you occupy in our lives, dear Heavenly Father. We thank you for the privilege of being able to sit before you today. We thank you, dear God, that you've given us a mission, you've given us a purpose, and you've given us a destiny, and that you went to prepare a place for us, and that we'll come to an expected And We thank you for that, and bless your name on today. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, let's start with a, a joke again, but let's see what Alexa has for us. Let's see if Alexa has a good joke for us. Alexa, tell me a joke. What do flowers wear under their petals? Under plants. <laughs> okay all right that's something that was a unique one so we've been talking a lot about meaning and we've been talking about purpose and god's purpose for your life and today i want to talk about one key and one important element because where we are now we're in the preparation stage especially with our age as teenagers right we're in a preparation stage where we need leadership but not just leadership we need godly leadership so my lesson for today is don't despise godly leadership. Don't despise godly leadership, okay? And the scripture we're going to use is Numbers 16. I'm not going to read this whole chapter to you today, but I'm going to give you a little summary video of this chapter. Story of Korah's Rebellion Now after Moses had led the people of Israel out of Egypt, a man named Korah, one of the Levites, came to Moses and said, Moses, we don't need you to be the priest. We can offer our own sacrifice and approach the Lord God as we want in our way. Moses was troubled by this. Then Moses said to Korah, tomorrow you and your men make your offering and sacrifice and my brother Aaron and I will make ours. So the next day, Moses and Aaron prepared their sacrifice, and Korah and his 250 men prepared their sacrifice. And the Lord God spoke to Moses and Aaron and said, Get away from Korah and his men, because I am going to destroy them for their sin. And Moses and Aaron said, God, are you going to destroy them all for this sin? And God said, Get away from them. Then Moses and Aaron got far away from Korah and his men, then suddenly, under the feet of Korah and his men, God smote the ground, and the ground split apart, and the earth opened and swallowed them all into a giant chasm down deep into the earth. They fell, and the earth closed back over them, and all of Israel fled and ran away. Later on, some of the Israelites complained against Moses and Aaron, saying, you have killed Korah and his men. God was angry and struck the Israelites with the plague of sickness that killed some of the people. Moses asked God, Please let me pray and stop the sickness. And when Moses and Aaron prayed and offered sacrifice to God, God stopped the sickness. So essentially, uh, this chapter talks about, of course, we know who Moses is. It talks about Moses, and it talks about a group of people rebelling against Moses. Yeah, believe it or not, there were people who were not on Moses' side, okay? One of the person's name was called Korah, who was against Moses, and he led a rebellion, okay? And he got a group of 250 elders together, and he said, you know what? We hear God just as well as Moses can hear God. We, have the, we should have the same rights and we should have the same access to God. And which they did have the same access to God, right? Every person has the same access to God. The difference is every person has a different role to play. The role that God gave Moses was to lead the Israelites out of captivity and into the promised land. Okay? But there were people who wanted to assume that role in that position that was not given to them. Right? That's not the position that God had given to them at that time. Maybe if they were patient, maybe if they had a different uh, measure of faith, then God would have seen it differently. But at this time, Moses was the leader, 
Moses was in charge and his brother Aaron as well. And these individuals had problems with that. And so what they did was they challenged Moses' leadership and they said, okay, we want to take you out of your position and essentially we'll assume that position and we have 250 elders of Israel that are behind us. And really what they were doing, they weren't really challenging Moses because Moses didn't give himself that position. Originally, when you read back in the scriptures, Moses originally did not want to go. God came to him in a burning bush and Moses was saying, well, I'm not eloquent enough. Can't you send somebody else? So Moses didn't even want the position himself. God gave him that position. God gave him that assignment. And so God assigned him to be the godly leader over this group of people, right? And we know that later on, Joshua came to be his successor. But at this time, it's Moses. And there's a group of people who are against Moses. And they're saying, you know what? Moses brought us out into the, this wilderness to die. Yeah, he got us out of Egypt and everything and all that. That was nice. But he brought us out of Egypt, out to this wilderness where we're going to die. We're not even going into the promised land. And so the people are impatient and they're upset with Moses. But ultimately, the fight is against God, right? But Moses is a merciful leader. So that's one point that I want us to write down, that a godly leader should be merciful. So before Moses even gets up and confronts what they're saying, Moses is hurt and Moses consults God, right? They're telling Moses, you've gone too far. And Moses is hurt by what they're saying, their words, like, how could you turn against me after all that I've been through and gone through? I'm with you in this. I'm not just telling you go off by yourself and go to the wilderness and live there by yourself. I'm with you in this and I'm learning as I go and God is directing me and instructing me as I seek his face. And it's not something that... All right, so our first point was a godly leader is merciful. Our second point is a godly leader is humble. This gentleman, Korah, is not humble at all. Yes, he comes from a good background. Yes, he's a, of the tribe of Levi. So he's a Levite, okay? And he comes from a, a pretty, what we would call good stock, right? Like his, his family heritage. He comes from a good family heritage, okay? So they are people who are uh, affluent. But he's out of place. He's out of position. He's trying to take the role that God did not assign to them, which is very dangerous, okay? So point number three would be make sure that you stay in your lane. Make sure you stay where God has assigned you for that particular time and purpose in your life for that for that season, right? Life is a series of seasons, and God has different has us go through different seasons according to our growth and our development and according to where we are in our faith, right? And according to his perfect will and according to his plan for his people, not just us as individuals, but for his people at large, because it's not just about us, right, individually. It's also about us collectively. So we can't be selfish enough where we only think about ourselves and not the collective body as a whole, right? He just wants the position for himself and not thinking about what? What's the impact on the collective body? Because he's obviously not a merciful person, okay? And then the fourth point that we need to look at here is what happens to him when he rebels against God? Because ultimately his fight is not with Moses because Moses didn't get the position in and of himself. God gave him that position. So his fight ultimately is with God. So when you get a position, when you're in leadership, in a leadership position that God has assigned to you and given to you, if somebody goes against you, they're not going against you. They're going against God. And that's a very dangerous position to be in. So make sure in your life that the leadership that God has placed over you, from your parents to your teachers, to all the godly leadership that has been placed over top of you, to even inside uh, the church, right? Your elders in the church. Make sure that we're obedient and that we're attentive and that we're listening, right? Not just rush, yeah, 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 I hear what you're saying. Mm-hmm, right, I don't want to do that. Right, right, right. And let's not be know-it-alls because there's, there's a lot that we can gain from other people, okay? In fact, at this age, it's the perfect time for you to get a mentor, a godly mentor that... Yes, a godly mentor that our parents have approved of, okay? Not just somebody that we go pick up off the streets or something like that. Somebody that our parents, we've discussed it with them and they have approved of that person and they're involved and they speak with that adult as well, okay? All right, so we're not just going out and just finding our own mentors, but... Is parent approved mentors, parent approved mentors. I got to emphasize that. All right. So, and finally, I would say thank God for the leadership that he's placed in your life. It's a blessing, whether you realize it or not at this age, it's a blessing to have godly leadership. 
it's a blessing to have godly parents and a godly heritage come from a godly family to have individuals that are examples for us to have godly teachers to have individuals in church who are mentors for us right that's truly a blessing you may not understand it now but i, I promise you in the future you will Later on, you'll say, thank God for the heritage that I was given because you get a better understanding of the mindset of God. They teach you about Christ and his principles. And the greatest gift that any parent can give to a child, that any adult can give to a child is the gift of salvation, of introduction, uh, introduction to Jesus Christ, introducing them to Jesus Christ. That's the greatest gift anyone can ever give someone is introducing someone else to Jesus Christ. And that's our role also as Christians is to be what? Evangelists, okay? All right, so I hope that we've taken something from our lesson for today. I can't wait till we all, you know, get back in the church service together once again once this corona dies down. But until then, you all remain safe and continue to be good stewards of what God has given you. Let's end in the word of prayer. God, we just bless you for another day, for another lesson. We thank you, dear God, that you gave us this Sunday. We thank you for how good and gracious you've been to us. Now we pray, dear God, that we would apply the principles from this lesson. The things that you gave in this word today, dear Heavenly Father, I pray that you would just breathe on it and move on it, dear God, in the hearts of each and every person. We thank you for this day. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, until next week, God bless you.